Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to Learning Game Development. This section we are going to learn a little bit about some C-sharp coding. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well and you can stay up to date with every section of this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So video game development always comes down to programming. There are obviously sections that don't need programming and there are even engines where you don't necessarily need to know programming to use it. Uh, programming itself can be somewhat complicated and takes a long time to learn. But if you build yourself up gradually, it's actually a lot of fun along the way. Now, the way programming works in Unity is you create a script, you open that script up in whatever um, editing software you want. In this case, we're going to use Visual Studio, and it doesn't really matter what version of Visual Studio you use, the code is going to be the same. Uh, and then you basically apply that script to a scene and make the code do what you want it to do. Now, a lot of people always get confused with versions, going back to versions again, um, not in Unity this time though, but with Visual Studio, it doesn't matter what version of Visual Studio you use, it doesn't matter what software you use to write your code, the code is always going to be the same. So let's go through a couple of important things when creating code. So to create your first script in Unity, you need to right click in your asset window, create, and at the very top, you'll see folder, but just below that, you'll see C Sharp script. Let's click that and we can name this anything we want. Let's just call this my script. Again, if it's relevant to what you're doing, you would call it just that. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. It may take just a moment to open your very first script. You see I'm using quite an old version of Visual Studio. I've always found 2017 to be the best version to use, but again, it might be something that you want to do something different with. You might want to use a later version or you might not even want to use Visual Studio at all. But again, it just means that the code is going to be the exact same. You're just using different software to write it in. So let's talk about what coding is useful for. So coding is literally useful for almost everything when it comes to sequences, when it comes to wanting the game engine to do something. So whether you want a character to move forward, you need a script for that. Whether you want to play a sound um, at a specific point in your game, you would need a script for that. Whether you want some coins to appear, collect them and then appear as the number of coins collected on your screen, you need scripting to do all of that. So we're going to cover some of the most basic things that we need to use within scripting. So we've opened uh, Visual Studio, so let's just make sure we can open our script. So if your script doesn't open first time in Visual Studio, just head back to Unity and re-double click it. Sometimes it doesn't because it's a little bit um, silly sometimes. Anyway, this is a default script when you create one from Unity. And there are a couple of sections that we need to talk about first and foremost. The top section here is a namespace and this is where we can add sections of a code to help the rest of the code understand what it's doing. So for example if we were using some AI in our script we would need to add in a namespace to say we're using this section of code to basically say yep yeah, we've got some AI here let's use this AI code to create our script. The next section is the class, and the class is basically where most of the scripting occurs. Inside the class, we have methods, and methods are a way of identifying what runs at what point. So all methods go inside the class, and obviously the class is, like I say, where most of the coding happens in this case. Uh, so a good example would be this method here called void start. This method occurs once and only once as soon as the script starts. The second method down here is called update. What this means is it's called constantly. So this method runs the whole time. And you can see above it, there is some green notes just saying this is what it does. So anything that's green and has two slashes to begin with is basically just a note. It's not a line of code per se. Uh, it's just a section of the code that can contain notes. So this line is never executed. It's never run. It doesn't really do anything. So let's establish what we can do with this. So inside a class, we can have some um, the method. So we don't have to stick with the void start and void update methods. We can have different method names. So we could have 
void um, mirror object. And that would be the name of our method. It would be mirror object. Um, a lot of the time though, when starting Unity in this sense, you probably will use the start and update methods more than anything. So to start things off, let's declare something called a variable. So if we go within our class, but not inside a method for now, we can add some extra lines and we can declare some variables. Let's declare a number. So we can say public, that's basically saying we can make this particular variable public. And I'll explain a little bit more why it's public uh, a little later on. And let's have a whole number, which is also known as an integer. And the way to declare an integer in scripting here is int. And then we can call it anything we want. We can call it um, transparent number, or we can call it easy number, or we can just call it something completely random at all, like subscribe to me. See what I did there? So let's call it subscribe to me. And you may have noticed I've done a little case S, uh, uppercase T, and an uppercase M right there. That's known as camel casing, and it's probably the most common way of programming uh, any language, not just C sharp, but like I say, any language. And we're going to finish this line off with a semicolon, which is just a little dot, and then the looks like a little comma below. And all that does is just closes that line off to say, yep, that's the end of the line. Let's execute the next line. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save that script. So control and S or file and save, whichever you want. And if we head back into Unity, it will compile that script. If there's any errors, it will tell you there's some errors in the console. But for now, all we've done is just declare one little variable. So it doesn't matter too much. Now let's actually attach this script to our scene. So I'm going to drag and drop this script into the hierarchy and drop it on the cube. And if I click on cube now, you'll notice down here, we have another component and that component is our script. And you can see there that subscribe to me is right there. So this is why we use public. So if we head back to our script and get rid of the word public and save, that variable is still declared, it is still in the script, but we cannot physically see it inside our inspector panel, inside that component. It disappears, but you can still use it. I usually like to have the word public just so as I can see things, especially when I'm debugging. When it comes to physical game development, you're shipping the final product. Um, it's something you probably maybe want to prepare ahead for, but it doesn't matter too much in a lot of terms. It's just a nice way of seeing how things are working. So let's try another variable. Let's have public and let's also have it as a decimal. So in coding in this sense, a decimal is known as a float. And we can have this named as click the bell with a semicolon at the end. So it's probably worth noting at this point, a lot of the time the code will end with a semicolon or a closed curly bracket or open curly bracket, or in this case, the parentheses, the open close bracket. Um, usually when you leave a line empty, yeah, like if we add another variable and we didn't have that, it would underline with a little error saying something wrong there. So just be mindful that that's the case. Uh, but what we can do is we can actually make this by default equal to, let's say 1.234 with an F after. And the reason we put that there is because when coding in this term, we need to put F so as it recognizes that it is a float. So let's save that. And then if we head back into Unity, let it compile, we should be able to see that we have an extra variable there. And by default, it is 1.234. So let's try another variable. Let's have a game object as a variable. So we want something to occur with a game object, not just a number that we've created. So we could say public game object. And again, we can call it anything we want. And let's say, let's call it this object with a semicolon and save once again. Make sure you always save after you do things and need to check it out in Unity because that way the script is saved and it does compile in the editor. 
And now we should get another variable up here in our MyScript component. And this time we can actually either select an object by selecting that little button and selecting whatever we want, or we could drag and drop and place there. So this particular variable always references that plane now, no matter what we do. So we could turn the plane on, we could turn it off. So if we press play, everything still functions as normal. No problems at all. Our script works just fine. All good. But let's say we want to turn off that plane as soon as the script starts. Well, this is where we start coding inside a method. So we could say this object dot set active and in brackets false with a semicolon at the end and save. So what have we done here? We've basically referred to the variable known as this object. We've told it what we want to do in this case, set it active or not. And then we've told it whether we want it on or not. So we've used a Boolean to say true or false. So we are saying we're going to turn the variable known as this object off as soon as the script starts because it's inside the void start section, which is the start method. So if we head back into Unity, let that script compile. And then if we press play, that plane will instantly disappear. So we'll never even see it. It's gone because we've set that as gone. And if we've selected the wrong object by chance, or, you know, it was the particle system we wanted to turn off, we could just replace that particle system over here and press play again. And the particle system will completely disappear. And you can see over here that it has faded slightly. That means it is no longer active. It has been turned off. So if we head back into our script again, and let's say we want to update our subscribe to me number constantly, we could say subscribe to me equals, actually, no, we'll do it plus equals one with a semicolon and save. So what this is going to do now is every single frame, it's going to add one to the value in subscribe to me. So if we wanted to set it as one, we wouldn't have that plus there. So if we head back to Unity once again, I'll be saying that a lot in this video. And if we press the play button, we should be able to see this number known as subscribe to me increase rapidly. It's not the most sensible thing to do, but it illustrates how this script is working and what can be done. You can see this script working real time, obviously, because we can see that value changing, but we can also change values of things just by doing that. Much like we did with our transform section up here, hover the mouse over, left mouse button down, and we can change that right there. So I know it's only a very, very simple script, but essentially these sorts of instances are the core aspects of creating a script. And as I say, I go into way more detail on the other videos, but again, this is just something to get you started to help you understand what exactly a script does. And I can't go into every single detail of what everything means in every script. It's something that you've now got the basics of coding. I have a nice series on coding in C Sharp. And if you want to head to that, you'll learn a lot more about different aspects. But as long as we've got the ultimate basics of a script down, we understand what certain sections are for, how to declare certain things, we're well on our way to creating our very first game. So in the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to look more into assets for our game. But one thing I'm actually going to do before we end this, I am going to do that to subscribe to me and resave it. That now means that this is also, although it's a line of code, it's also annotated out. That means that line of code will never run. So just to illustrate that, if we head into Unity and press play once again, this particular variable will no longer change. So again, it's all understanding how code works and how it processes each line of code. So yeah, assets we're going to look at next time. Until then guys, Thank you very much for watching.